Hello, Gary Rich. I know it's been a while, I know, but you know what? There's so much crap out there at the moment. I only use the icing on the cake. So let's talk about something which I think is a 9 out of 10 moment. And I'll repeat that, a 9 out of 10 moment. And it's called trust. And you've got to trust me. If you don't watch this, you're... F yes. Who's in it, gal? Right, Donald Sunderland. As in Donald Sunderland's Kelly's Heroes, Dirty Dozen, Clute. Uh, don't look now. He is playing the part of his career. I'm going to say that straight out. If he's played a better part, if he's ever acted any better, let me know what it is. I'll go and watch it. This is one of the most outstanding performances I've ever seen on a TV series for many years. He is like a Shakespearean Hamlet wandering through the mist of playing Paul Getty. Unbelievable performance. Outstanding to every frame that he's in the TV series. He steals every scene. Who else is in it? Probably one of Hollywood's A-list actresses. Picks her parts. Doesn't just go and does any old fucking thing. Hilary Schwank, as in Million Dollar Baby Hilary Schwank, unbelievable in this. Unbelievable performance. Brendan Fraser. He's okay. Now, let's talk about Brendan Fraser. This is a man who played uh, in the Mummy films and uh, played Disney comedies, something like Do Dougley or something, fucking some silly thing he did where he talks to an animal. Anyway, he has had a wilderness career in the last few years. He's back now doing straight acting, and he's superb in this. Superb. And I'm pleased he's working, and I'm pleased he's good in this, because if you're not good in this, you're absolutely knackered. Because this is A-list. A-list TV. Uh, the next character I want to talk about is Harrison Dickinson. Never heard of him? No. Well, he's playing Paul Getty Jr. Because this is about the Getty family. And if you didn't know that, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what's going on. But basically... Donald Sunderland is the wealthiest man in the world in the top five list. Paul Getty. Uh, the son is played by, I can't think of his name. Let me just have a look in a moment. Anyway, played by an American actor. But Harrison Dickinson, who is from Leighton Stone in London, plays a hippie grandson. I'll repeat that part. He's from London. Nothing new there. Good actor. Where's he come from? He's come from the National Theatre. He's done no TV. He's done no films. He did a BAFTA winning uh, film which was a 20 minute film he is plucked from the sky and when he was plucked he was plucked by one of the shrewdest men ever to make a film Danny Boyle is involved in this as in Danny Boyle um, train spotters as in Danny Boyle uh, the Olympic ceremony which I still think is the best in London that there's ever been he is the main producer for this but also directs it and trust me when he directs these you know it's Danny Boyle Let's talk about some of the other actors. There's so many in this. Cyrus Carson. Never heard of him? Get your ass kicked. He plays the butler. When I first saw this Indian gentleman, he was in EastEnders. He was an absolute bastard in EastEnders. He got burnt in the end. They burnt him in the house. He is superb in this. And you have to be on point with this because you are up against Donald Sunderland's lifetime performance. And he is superb as the butler. There's so many lines that I love in this TV series. The opening, opening sequence of... Um, goes mad in a guy I won't explain too much but one of the sons gets involved in running through a party and ends up doing something anyway you'll see that but there's Donald Sunderland sitting in this massive dining room with his four women that he lived with and I'll repeat that part he lives with four women and this is all based on fact and Cyrus Carson passes him the newspaper the Times because he lives in the UK and he says has that just gone up again he said it has one p he said right if it goes up anymore I'm cancelling it now this is the wealthiest man in the world so you can imagine when Harrison Dickinson gets kidnapped, uh, he isn't willing to pay the 17 million fee to get him away. So the Italian mafia have his grandson and he's had a good relationship with his grandson. But one thing that Paul Getty won't take is anyone who takes drugs. And unfortunately, Harrison Dickinson, who is the actor who plays the grandson, has been on drugs. And his father, Michael Esper, who I'm trying to find the name, who uh, is actually American, he's also been known for drugs. But he doesn't mind if you screw four women at the same time, which is what he does, Paul Getty, but you're not allowed to take drugs. Anyway, this is just... Oh, I can go and stay on this blog for five hours and talk about this TV series. Photography, unbelievable. Basically, the way to look at this is... I've watched it all in one day. They're 48 minutes an episode, and if you went to the cinema and saw a film for two and a half hours... And it was Godfather Part 1. That would be the first half. That would be the first five episodes. The second part would be Godfather Part 2. That's how good this is. It's like watching a movie. Photography is movie standard. 
editing outstanding. Actors, whoever did the acting, whoever got did the acting, whoever got the cast together should get an award by itself because everyone is on point on this. There's one bit I didn't like, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Everyone has to stand up to a level. The Italian section, which is where we deal with the Mafia, isn't done in English, it's done in subtitles, which doesn't affect me because I love Grimora. But the photography and everything, even there, I can imagine, if, you, if this is an Italian doing a review on this TV series, the Italians, who I have seen in other, other parts, would probably be the A-list of what Italy is because they've used every best actor to put this together. There's one thing that worries me about this, and it's only a joke, but it's true. He speaks to the president, uh, Donald Sunderland, and it's the, um, I can't think of the twat's name, but it's the Welsh actor from um, Gavin and Stacey who plays the father who does all the game shows and goes around with Steve Coogan. You'll know his name. He plays the president. He's only in it for 30 seconds, but for God's sake. There's one scene I want to talk about which I remember for the rest of my life, and it's Donald Sunderland doing a little dance in, the, I think it's episode seven, and it's just brilliant. The negotiations with the Mafia is outstanding. There's some great lines all the way through that. Listen, I can go on and on and on about this TV series. Do not miss it. It's a 9 out of 10. It's made by FX. I take my hat off to FX. I'm watching their series called Snowfall at the moment, which is outstanding. I'm going to be watching a film called 22 July, which is about Norway's um, big uh, problems they had a few years ago when they had... Uh, uh, a guy that exploded two bombs in Oslo. They went off to an island and killed a load of children. It's been done by Peter Greengrass. I'm hoping to watch that. It's a bit sad, but I will watch it because I spent a lot of time in Norway on the ships. Other than that, 9 out of 10. Please do not mistrust. Trust me, this is one of the highlights of the year. If it doesn't win awards, then pack up the award ceremonies around the world. Call it a day. Knock them on the head. Give the awards to any silly bugger that's walking by from fucking... Some shit that's been made by a reality TV series about Essex. Give it to them. Because this is the most outstanding cast members put together on a screen for a very, very long time. Donald Sunderland. Woo! Unbelievable. I will be back soon. Sorry for the delay for any reviews, but I just will not watch shit. I only watch the cream. And if I do watch shit, trust me, you'll know about it. All the best.